Thank you again, Hannah and the Guidely community for inviting me to, to share today about um, what I have been working on the past you know, year, year and a half. And uh, I'm so excited to share that with you today because it's um, in the times we are living in, it is um, really, really important, I believe, to really live from our true self. And today we're going to talk about multidimensional living. So that's a big, <laughs> big topic, right? And, and how to live from the heart and intuition. And I think many of us are, are feeling it, that there is more to our live uh, the way we're living than being uh, trying to figure everything out all the time. And so today we're going to talk about multidimensional living, and I will go into you know how I define that um, also in this session. But most importantly, it's really to hear from you how you are seeing this shift of being driven by the mind, you know, many of us have the experience from many years to, you know, go, 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 figuring it out um, and feeling resistance and, and frustration in our lives to, you know, living from our heart where we can invite more ease and flow in our life. And I wanted to um, just ask who was at the uh, session yesterday with Dr. Gabor Mate. Yeah. And what he talked about there, and I, it was some beautiful, beautiful, um, you know, live help <laughs> in, in this session for, for uh, and we, we, I think we all connected with, with that and was, our hearts were wide open after that session. At least I felt like that and the, the witnessing of empowering people on the spot. And this is what we're talking about, opening up our hearts, opening up to living who we truly are um, and every day do that. So I wanted to just introduce myself first because you, you may not have uh, met me or before and uh, it's, uh, I'll give you a little highlight a uh, second or so about myself. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach, energy healer, and yoga teacher. And But I've not always been that. In the past, I was a um, corporate person, <laughs> scientist, uh, businesswoman. I worked 20 plus years in, in corporate uh, positions uh, within pharmaceutical industry research and development and uh, that you may wonder like how how can she make such a shift from being um, a corporate uh, you know and, and if you imagine that sometimes for many of us have been a um, definition of success to have a, a great paying job um, you know, everything, because I had everything you could ask for, young family, degrees, and, and business travel, nice hotels, you know, all of that. But what I felt was also that there, there is more. I felt a daily frustration within myself, and it led me to a rock bottom. Uh, and we, we, uh, we, we're not going to go into the rock bottom here, but I think when I share this story about my, uh, myself and this major shift I've made, many of us can, can relate to that, uh, that this feeling of like, there, there's got to have to be more. I'm not fully me. And um, so, so that's, that's really what led me to my life's work which involves this shift from being this mind-driven person, very logical and trying to fit in the mold to uh, blooming as a healer, basically. And, and the ev evolution of that shift, what, I, what it's done to my life. 
So that's really what I want to share with you today, because there, there are some um, truths in, in um, what we can learn from, from not only my experience, but I'm sure from your experiences as well. And what that leads into, which is multidimensional living uh, eventually. Um, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to talk about so we can, you know, spend the next 30, 35 minutes and then we can open up for some discussion and questions and, and conversation because at the end of this, I'm going to invite you to uh, the Guidely group that I've created mm -hmm. and where we are going to have a continuum, uh, continued experience with this conversation in upcoming sessions. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that after, but it's, this is not just one and done. <laughs> so, so I'm inviting you to, to this um, integration exploration with me. And this is the, the ig ignition of it really. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the concept of multidimensional living and this major shift from being driven by the mind to living from the heart and intuition first. And then we're gonna go into seven shifts, seven inner shifts that I'm uh, teaching basically through. And I, I, I just published a book about it too. And I wanna show it to you, Wisdom Beyond What You Know how to shift from being driven by the mind to living from the heart and intuition. And in that book, I'm outlining seven inner shifts that we're gonna you know, scratch the surface on. But in the Guidely group, uh, in the coming weeks, we are going to go deeper in each of these shifts. So here, we're gonna go a little bit on the surface and, and talk about it, but as much as we can do in, in about half an hour. And at the end, I have a free gift for you as well, of course. And it's a free chapter. Uh, the first th 30 or so pages of this book, you, you are bringing home. <laughs> so um, any questions? Any, um, what are you most excited about hearing about when, when you came here today? Tell me a little bit about that in the chat, just a sentence or a word or something that drew you here today. You. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> yes, Tom. Uh, honestly, it's something I relate to personally so very well because I've lived from the uh, neck up most of my life um, and only within the past year started to really, truly sink in down here. Yeah. Um, and it's just something I, I, I'm so passionate about because it's something I want to share with a lot of the men that I work with. So beautiful. I really appreciate you doing this. Great. Yes. And um. There is much to dive into, but let me share it with you first. Um, you know, how I kind of get this topic. And Stephanie says, let's, let's see, I, I'm drawn by the concept of the shift from mind to heart. Drive, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's dive into it. So I, I didn't make a slide for this, so I'm going to draw it for you. Um, and here, I think you can see this. If this is symbolizes us, this is how I, how I kind of, um, and Hannah is here for the seven shifts. Oh yeah. Whee, <laughs> perfect. If, if we for a moment um, imagine ourselves as this funnel, and I'm sure you can relate to that there's a lot of different influences here on a daily basis that comes at us. And we filter through this uh, throughout the day. And at the end of the day, we come to ourselves. I'm putting a little heart there. How many of you have felt this on a daily basis that there's so much input so much things for us to process on a daily basis. And at the end of the day, we kind of, okay, uh, where am I all in all of this? Am, am I kind of at the end of the stick? <laughs> and this is really also from my own perspective, how I experienced most of my um, 
career uh, and life in the past. Now, let's move into what we're, uh, and I'm, I'm simplifying it really because I, I want to um, explore this further. The opportunity here is to transform into something else in terms of how we view our life in a way, because sometimes it is a, um, a perspective. And I kind of want to turn this triangle upside down. And I want to put the ourselves, our heart at the very top. And this is where the more comes in. Not only this image is giving us an empowerment within ourselves of being at the top of the eagle's perch, if you will, it actually allows us to connect to the rest of the universe. And what I mean with that, we'll go into. And if we compare these two um, images, like if we live our lives this way, there is like very limited chance for us to connect to the rest of the whole, right? The universe uh, energy that is, uh, wants to support us, if you will, on a daily basis. But in this image here, there is a natural um, closer connection. And if we put a couple of words here underneath here, this could be driven by the mind and this could be heart-centered. This could be um, disconnected. This could be self-aware and so on. But I'm sure you can this is how I usually, when I talk about this concept and in this, here comes the shift. And it's really this arrow here we're gonna talk about today a little bit more, but does this resonate with you in terms of how I kind of go about this in a very simplified way? Yeah. Stephanie's saying, I can relate to the constant processing of input and sensory overload. Yes. So, yes. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding correctly. So the, the mind kind of like the inverted triangle, this is, you know, all of, all of the sensory input, all of the input that we receive on a daily basis, it all, it all kind of comes in and then it's, and then it's us. And, and whereas if we're, if we're living from more of a, a heart centered and self-aware place, able to to take that input and and process it in a way that it comes it comes through us from a heart centered place is that am i picking up correctly yes yes you're okay. absolutely right because the at least the way this is a lot here mm -hmm. in this concept of making space for yourself in a in a completely different way in your life yeah. rather than putting yourself at the very bottom of of the of the totem pole, if you will. And this is what, what we talked about previously in terms of this could be a picture of, let's say my corporate career or many of the situations that all of you have been in where you come home at the end of the day and is exhausted at the end of the day. And, and that means that ourselves, we, we kind of have put ourselves last while here mm -hmm. it's to keep ourselves full and connected all day and mm -hmm. let everything else kind of filter down from there. But this is, I'm sure I'm gonna make a slide of this one day, but <laughs> this is uh, kind of the, the major concept of making this shift. And it has to do with our self perception as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it resonates. Rebecca says, I love this concept and visual aid. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'm gonna be, <laughs> make a little better slide on it uh, eventually. And there's a lot of different words we can put to this image with the, with the triangle, with the heart and the arch above, right? It can 
it can be a lot of words like heart centered, it can be um, energy aware, it can be um, whole as well. But I wanted to share with you just kind of how I how I see this. And yeah, so let's let's dive into this concept of multidimensional living because this piece here is really what we what I mean with multi multidimensional living. And I want to read something from my book to you that I have in the very last chapter, which is um, multidimensional living, basically um, the last shift. And we'll we'll get to all of these shifts in a minute. But I want to read to you um, the definition that I put together. Multidimensional living is a transformation into the essence of we and us instead of me and them. It's a new sense of balance in the collective of harmony and peace for all. Imagine a life where we fully get to know and express our innate talents and gifts in unlimited combinations, rather than placing ourselves in a predetermined, socially accepted career path. Imagine a life where we, have, where, where we are valued and contribute based on our talents and gifts. Imagine a life where demonstration of self-awareness and self-love is a prerequisite for any relationship. Imagine a life where we naturally come together to create life-changing healing and solutions for all rather than being served an answer by few. So that's, that's how I define multidimensional living and what that represents. And that image again with the arc, the heart and ourselves in, in the center is a, a major shift from what many of us have experienced so far. So how, how do you feel when I read that? Uh, oh, Rebecca. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Rebecca. Hey. Um, it resonates deeply. Um, it feels like, um, uh, it feels peaceful and, um, uh, like when I'm hearing it, when I heard you speak those words, I could actually, it felt like everything kind of, um, made more sense. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, what an amazing reminder. What, um, an amazing perspective to approach, uh, our life with. Yeah. And Tom is, thank you, Rebecca. Tom is saying, I'm impatient for, for it already to be here. <laughs> that sounds like home to me. Yeah. And Hannah says, yes. Yeah. And of course, this is, um, if we can think it, we can create it, right? But let's count, let's get down to it. Because um, often when we live in the mind, driven by the mind, um, things like this stays as a thought because we're up here, right? But when we move down to our heart and our being and connect with our intuition, it becomes empowering and we can take action. So why don't we get into these seven shifts? Because this um, piece of work that I've I put out there is, is not just a theory. There is um, some hands-on stuff in there as well. So the seven shifts that I have, it's really the third part of the book. And uh, the, the third part uh, contains these seven shifts. The two parts before that, which we will go into in, in the group sessions later in the group, in the guidely group, in the book club format, uh, talks about our mind-driven living. And often it speaks to the patterns that we have been maintaining, such as 
you know, how we define success and pushing ourselves to the limit and, and feeling that it might be working against who I truly am. For example, people pleasing is also another pattern and mind driven, it, and those are our effects and uh, results out of being living out of the mind. The second part of the book is really the fundamentals of heart centered living, which I go into. We won't talk much about each of those today because I really want to share the shifts with you and scratch the surface on those. But heart centered living um, in part two of the book goes into energy awareness, tapping into our body's wisdom, connecting with nature, connecting with uh, our intuition and how to do that and trust our inner knowing. And also to notice, you know, signs and synchronicities. And that's the arc, you know, the, the inflow and outflow information that we ha always have access to, but we have not really um, been that connected before. So all of those things I just said about heart-centered living is, is really what goes into that uh, image, you know, that we talked about earlier, this on this side here. <laughs> See, I can't, this one here. So let me share a little bit about these shifts and uh, each part of, of these shifts and throughout the book, there are also um, hands-on exercises that, because I really want this to not be staying as a thought. You know, you read a book sometimes and put it on the shelf. No, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm here to ha actually help others integrate this into their own life. And it takes a little bit of time. It's not a quick fix anymore. <laughs> so the first shift I want to share with you is the uh, comfort zone, going from the comfort zone to uh, commitment to yourself. And what do you feel when I say a commitment to yourself? I just automatically, you know, it was like, okay, it's a commitment to my higher self, right? Because my, you know, myself, my small self, that, that is my comfort zone. And my higher self says, no, thank you. We're going to, we're going to step out and, and we're going to do things this way. Uh, so that's what immediately kind of populated into, into my mind when I was hearing you. Absolutely. And uh, just to share a little story about my own uh, journey to make a commitment to myself. It, it, and for many, it happens through a rock bottom where we are shown that, okay, are you going to continue in this way? Or are you going to go if you are at the crossroad? Basically, every rock bottom is, is a crossroad where we have a choice. Do we want to choose a different way of living or do we want to go another round? So, uh, and you'll read about that in the book as well, in terms of what that meant for, for me. And I, I'm sure whatever framework we want to put into, you know, a rock bottom, it can come into different situations for everyone. Everyone's different. But the, the purpose of it and the shift that we are making in that moment is a choice of, am I making a commitment to myself and my evolution or am I staying in the comfort zone? And I'm sure you have had, you know, those types of opportunities in, in the past or one that's coming up where this choice to ourselves um, is, is evident, right? And um, when we're living in from the mind, for example, we may not be connected with what the options are. But when we live from the heart, uh, that gives a different response. Um, and I'm going to just look at the time we have. We have another half an hour. So I'm going a little bit fast on these seven shifts because I want to have a conversation also about um, each of them. Now, they are building on each other because without a commitment to yourself, it's, you're going to stay in the comfort zone, coming back to old patterns, um, simply. Uh, it's, it's this point of no return, basically. 
that needs to happen where it opens up a door to the next shift, which is going from being disconnected to self-aware. And, you know, the disconnection is what I felt way back when in, in my corporate career. Like if somebody asked me back then, what do you do for fun, Eureka? Like instead of working, I had no answer. I did not know what I loved doing, just being me. I had done a lot of things that I thought others were, were um, you know, having fun doing. <laughs> but so this epiphany of, I don't really know what I love doing. I didn't have any um, specific ideas of that. And that, was a, a discovery that sent me into curiosity. So this shift is inevitable. Any, any personal development that we are going through, healing comes with this shift of going from being disconnected from our true self to becoming self-aware and learning, being curious about ourselves is, is, a, is a word that I love. Um, and that is a huge, like a monumental shift. If someone goes from being disconnected from themselves to, to even scratching the surface of, of their own um, being, so to say, that, that's, I love watching that happen for people. Um, but it's a, it's a huge shift, and which leads to the next one. And the next shift I call going from codependency to sovereignty. And again, <laughs> I'm holding up this picture here. This is sovereignty to me, where we can put ourselves at the top of our own mountain and uh, have that view of our life looking out, seeing the big picture of our life instead of putting ourselves here in, in the trenches that many of us are, are doing at the moment because we're trying to take everything in or process the environment. But actually up here in this energy, we are sovereign. So when I talk about this shift going from codependency to sovereignty, it is to um, really go deep into the environment and the people we spend time with and our um, past patterns when it comes to uh, you know, energetic cords with other people, for example, and becoming aware of that and, and actually release some of that. So, and, and that's a whole, whole chapter in the book around the co identifying the, our co codependent patterns and uh, release them. And what it means to be sovereign in our own life together with others. Because sovereignty has nothing to do with being on your own. <laughs> it's, it really is this inner, inner peace, knowing who you are in, amongst others, irrespective of what other people do or say even, that's that, and I'm simplifying just because we, we have only so much time today, but if this resonates with you and want to have more conversation about any of this, I'm inviting you to the guidely group, living from the heart and intuition to go deeper with this. Now the fourth shift, it builds on it here, uh, from learning to embodying. And when we live up in our mind, and I'm sure you can relate to this too, I personally, I am a learner. I wanna take a lot in, I wanna learn all the time. I, I you know, my bookshelf is, <laughs> is full of books. I have bought tons of courses, like I'm a learner and many of us are, and we take a lot in and learn and explore. 
But it comes a time when this shift has to happen to when we actually live what we've learned. And that is part of embodying who we are, embodying our wisdom, basically. And, and uh, that's a step that not so many are taking because we live with so much information and we, we take it in, but it's like, okay, how is that showing up in, um, in my own life? And that was one of the shifts that really hit home for me because being a very logical scientist, <laughs> you know, in the, in the early days, uh, very disconnected from myself and my body, this has been a major shift for me where I, um, I prioritize today to actually live what I learn in a completely different way. And, and that's, a, that's a huge shift in terms of knowing also what's right for me. We're moving on to shift five and I'm just giving you the, the little scratching the surface. The shift number five is from logic. And we talked about this from logic to wisdom. As someone who has been driven by my log logic and was, you know, brought up using our, my mind and ignoring my own needs, basically, at the end of the day, um, how, how do I shift into using my wisdom, tapping into my wisdom? Well, it is to learning to tap into what my truth is. Because the logic is, is often this construct, right? What's right and what others have or society have, have identified as a success for us. But the wisdom comes when we tap into our heart and take guidance from our intuition and what's right for us, our body. So I, I, shift number five is a whole chapter about that shift between how does that look like to shift from being you know, trying to figure it out all the time, being impatient about figuring out <laughs> to sitting back and riding on a lazy river, basically, <laughs> you know, down the, down the lazy river and, and uh, knowing that, again, that inner peace that I trust my own wisdom. So that's, that's one that's huge. And the sixth shift is a major one because here's where people want to start. And that's the one from pushing to manifesting. A lot of people want to start with that shift we have before having kind of experience with the other ones. And, and there's a lot of talk about, oh, manifesting here and manifesting there. And you have to sit with your affirmations and all of that that's not going to be as powerful unless you tap into your wisdom and being sovereign and all of those things. But I thought it was so important to, to write about this shift between pushing and go, 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 because it was part of my major of my career in the past to be the go-getter and to shift to manifest through um, basically allowing and receiving and that energy shift that means. So I talk about that in shift uh, six. Now the seventh shift is to go from being individual and seeing ourselves as the individual in the world and everybody's over there and I'm here to seeing ourselves as multidimensional and that connection with the universe and everything around us, our environment, nature, um, seasons, cycles, all of those things. And that's a major shift. Uh, and uh, that's where the life change comes in, where we are living like this in, in uh, harmony with everything around us. And this arch can represent that. instead of being um, this individual that walks around uh, <laughs> the world and, and seeing uh, a lot as uh, separate. So yeah, 
I'm excited to, you know, this is just really sharing with you what these shifts are. And uh, I would love to hear from you, which, what of this, what of these shifts? It's just a way to framework it, right? What stood out to you or anything that, what I just said that resonated extra with you? Yeah, first of all, congratulations on writing, writing and publishing this book. It's amazing. And I love, I love the, you know, all of these are such beautiful conversation starters, all of these shifts. Um, so I'm really excited to dive in here. Uh, Rebecca said number four. number four. Yeah, Rebecca, I felt super, I was like, oh, <laughs> that one for me too. I, I tend to, I tend to do a lot of, a lot of learning and um, it really, that embodiment piece is just so, so, so important. So yeah, mm. I, really, I feel number four also. <laughs> And Tom is saying number five, definitely, which was the logic part and um, to shift into actually tapping into our own innate wisdom that's already there, where we don't have to learn more. And, uh, and that, that is a, that's a major shift, yes, because that intake of information that we want to make something of to tapping into what we innately already know good at it's already there there's no more learning to do <laughs> and that's a huge you know what do we do <laughs> when we don't have to learn anymore it's a huge one from yes tom it's it's um it's a different place to to approach like to approach our lives from mm -hmm. stephanie says i say between four and five yeah so it sounds like the four and five learning to embodying was number four and uh, logic to wisdom was number five mm -hmm. yeah and those are um yeah I, I think we all can see where we today uh in the way we're living our lives if by generalizing that's not as much part of our day so yeah now uh, I'm going to see, we have 20 minutes left. Any other comments on this? Anything you want to learn more about or talk a little bit more about? Because um, as I said, there is a chapter in each of each of these shifts in the book. And that's just a part three of the book. The, the part one and two really goes into, you know, identifying our mind-driven patterns and then talking about the components, the fundamentals of heart-centered living, uh, which has to do with the energy aware, like a lot of energy is coming into the picture and awareness around that, of course, as well. Anything you're curious about? Yeah, I would love to kind of get into a conversation about since since the majority of us here um, are feeling especially called out perhaps by numbers four and five, um, <laughs> I would be curious to, you know, to dive into kind of, because we've all experienced, you know, kind of we, if we are to separate these into two columns, right? Um, we've all experienced both columns at different times, right? There are days where, you know, I feel super committed to myself, very self-aware, you know, I'm a sovereign divine being, all of, you know, all of those, right? And I feel like I'm embodied and, and not so much in the, you know, logical in my mind. And then there are days when I am, you know, all in the column of, of, you know, in my comfort zone, feeling rather disconnected. So I'd be curious to, you know, to maybe lean in here and, and see what some of, um, you know, you, your favorite practices are for, you know, if you're noticing that you're kind of feeling in that, you know, like I need to learn, I, you know, I need all of this logic, you know, how to make that shift from, you know, perhaps we can, you know, call it as, as a theme, the egoic self to, you know, to kind of that, that higher self resonance. Mm. Um, I would love to, you know, to hear kind of your favorite ways to notice that you're in those places of, you know, 
mind um, and your favorite ways to kind of be reflective in there and make that shift to heart centered. And, you know, Tom, Rebecca, Stephanie, Shannon, I would love to hear, you know, from you guys too about, you know, your experiences in those places and how, you know, how you kind of shift um, from, from one to another. Hmm. I'm so glad you asked this question because, you know, we, we, we're not going to, you know, dissociate from our, our mind, right? We need our mind, but the major shift in perception is where do we go first for uh, answers, let's say. And we are, we are never going to be like all, always in our heart and, or only in our brain and not so, I mean, that it, we are a whole being, right? But what it means, and I'll come to the practices in, in a moment because I'm so glad you asked this question, um, is a life change in terms of how we see ourselves. I think that's, that's the simplest way I can say that. And what that means is once we shift into trusting that we have the answers already, we have the heart up on that eagle's perch, right? Once we uh, prioritize ourselves and our well-being every single day, we don't have to question whether we are disconnected from ourselves or not. We just know we're just, we just know that we are in our body and we are here. And when it comes to this whole shift, the fundamental, in my opinion, is a, um, life change in terms of having some sort of daily practice to create this energy for ourselves. And what I mean with that is, for, I can just share what I've done in this shift. When I was here, and I'll give you the opposite here, just to, for you to kind of feel the difference in my life as an example. When I was here in the morning, if we take the morning as an example, I had, uh, I didn't sleep that well during the night. I woke up with the alarm, with my cell phone on the nightstand and a post-it pad half full of to-do items. I, when the alarm rang, I, went up right away uh, into the shower, down in the kitchen, got a cup of coffee and out the door. Commuting into uh, Cambridge in Boston, outside Boston. There was like no acknowledgement of me as a, as a whole person. It was just like, go, go, go. And uh, <clears throat> I already had my day planned out and the next couple of days too, probably in my mind, right? Now, what happens for me now, here, I don't have an alarm in the morning. When I wake up, I lie there, I put my hands on my body, on my heart, I connect with my body, with my energy in my body, I feel into how I feel. And I lie there probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just connecting with myself, coming out of sleep, writing down maybe, uh, sometimes I write down my dreams because I want to remember them. <laughs> I slowly wake up. I um, meditate in the morning. I sit up right in my bed. And after meditation, I, I make myself a cup of tea or coffee. I love that, you know, reward in the morning. I do uh, uh, practice 
energy practice or yoga, some sort of body movement, energy um, uh, exercises or bre breath work. You know, can you sense the difference? <laughs> and when I, when I describe this to you, what is the difference between those two? That's what I mean in terms of putting yourself at the top of your life is to start your day. And that's how I feel is important for me. There might be something else in the way you, um, what's important for you, but I, I have a completely different honor for myself and what I need and awareness of it. So that lifestyle change is what I mean in terms of practice. You asked about practices every single day. And it has become kind of, you know, how I approach my life now. And that's a major, major shift that comes with this inner trust, inner, um, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight, obviously, <laughs> but it's, it's that we come to shift number one, the commitment to yourself, it's gotta have to look a little bit different than what you've committed to yourself in the past. So I, I hope, does that help, Hannah? Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you, Ulrika. Yeah. Any other, uh, Stephanie saying, I agree, I've changed how I see myself. Therefore, I feel that now I have the ability to lead from my heart. Yes, from the heart. Yeah, beautiful. And Tom says, I'm sure you touch on this in the book and I will do so in the group. But if there's time, maybe we could talk about how to distinguish between the intuitive voice and the fearful, egoic, logical one. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And again, um, I'll, I'll give you a little um, story here. In the past, I, I didn't listen to my body. I didn't listen to what, what my inner voice was telling me. I only listened to what my ego is telling me, which was you have to go, go, go. You have to get the next promotion. You have to uh, do all these things, right? But I shift through this process to um, like today I channel uh, my true self, my, my spirit team basically on a daily basis and probably doing it now too. <laughs> but, but it's, it's this, um, first of all, I had to slow down because the egoic voice, I talk about this in the book as well, the, the mind ego voice versus uh, our true selves um voice and our connection with our our uh, you know universal guidance that's already there it is to sl uh, slow down and dare to listen and i say dare to listen because what we think we are may not be what comes through when we listen and that is that shift from who am i really have i built my self image from from an external perspective or is it um, from who I'm truly am? So it's this, it's this moment of slowing down. And that's what I mean with spiritual practice. I call it a spiritual practice because it is this muscle we're training. Everyone has this availability, I believe, to listen to uh, what your true self, your guides are telling you or share, want to share with you. Um, but it takes commitment. It takes a um, making space for that in your life. So to determine uh, on your question, Tom, how to differ between what's my intuitive voice or, or my guide's voice uh, versus what is my ego telling me? Well, I can give you one tip. Your intuitive voice, your true self that's coming from the heart, that energy, is never going to lead you down the wrong, wrong path, ever. And that is something I hold on to. And it, it's like, it's, you, you can't, <laughs> it's like, you can't go wrong if you listen to your own intuition. But the ego uh, wants to put 
into, um, it wants to feel, makes you feel safe, of course, but on what terms? Is it, uh, you know, the terms of having a great job, earn a lot of money, all of those things that has to do with being in an individual? Or is it for the greater good, which the intuition, in my opinion, always is, is guiding us to, to be more in, in harmony with ourselves and our, the rest of, of what we're part of. So that's a little tip for those who kind of, oh, am I really listening to my intuition? You are, if it not only feels good, that's another guidepost. If it feels good, if you can feel it in your heart, like, and, but it takes like slowing down. Yeah, and I can talk a lot about this, but does that help at all, Tom? Yeah, great. And Hannah's saying, uh, and Re Rebecca first, what I'm hearing is who are we serving, external or internal? Yes, yes. And this could, uh, what you're saying, Rebecca, is very important because to determine this, what is an external input or serving something in the external versus what's internal takes time to sit with sometimes. It's not always, it's that such a, um, you know, clear, clear, um, yeah. But again, I cannot uh, emphasize more that if we want to get to this place of feeling whole with ourselves and the rest of the universe and everything around us as in multidimensional living, we have to slow down and, and spend time with ourselves to hear this truth that we have already in within us. but it's, it's a commitment we have to make to ourselves. Hannah says, safe and ability to attach to an identity. What do you mean by that? When you were uh, speaking about the ego and ego seeking safety, really at the end of the day, it's just what identity can I attach to? Mm -hmm. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, like what you, what you were saying earlier in the presentation about how, um, you know, I have to, I have to get this promotion or, you know, I have to have this title or, you know, all of these external, you know, all of these external expectations, um, you know, it's, we're programmed, our, our egos are, are programmed to, you know, to want to fill those boxes and, um, you know, be able to own those identities. So that's, you know, that's where the safety piece comes in and, you know, stepping out of the comfort zone is very much like, okay, well, I have sat with myself a little bit and it turns out that this isn't exactly the identity that I would like to uh, align with. So yeah, just a little. True. Yeah, and and uh, I just wanna add to that too. And I, Stephanie has a raised hand here. Uh, I'll get to you in a second, is that, um, our ego often, in my experience, wants to um, show up as an external uh, thing. That uh, when we do something from an ego place, it's often to give off something to the outer world. So that's another determination we can make. Like, is this really for me? no matter what's outside of me or is it for something out there mm. and when it's for ourselves no matter what's outside of us then we know it's me it's it's my truth right so in my case I felt good when I started to change my morning routine into something else and I just expanded that into to something that I'm I love I want to do it every day. I want to, you know, go back to it. And that's kind of the, the thing, right? The ego says you have to go to a gym five days a week and you have to do this program that somebody's giving us. And that's all good. I mean, I, I'm not against going to the gym, but 
I don't know if I ask, uh, you know, 50 people in a gym, do they love going there? Absolutely love it. And maybe five people raise up their hand and say, I love going to the gym. The rest of the 45 people says, it's something I have to do, right? And that's what we're talking about. What is it that we love doing? It doesn't matter how it looks like on the outside uh, in a way, but if we love doing it, that's where we, need, that's where we can expand on it. And for you, it might look like something different. Maybe you love going for a walk every morning. Yes, <laughs> right? But it's, it's this, uh, the ego often wants to show off, right? Or do something that shows up on the outside. Does that help? Yeah. Stephanie, we are yeah. running out of time, but uh, Stephanie, Hi. yes. So quickly, I had a question on, I know you've mentioned several times about slowing down and I guess I, cause I feel like I'm in kind of this slow down phase here, but I wanted to know also in a parallel, um, part of this journey, when you are slowing down and when you're, um, you know, discovering when you've processed a lot of the trauma, et cetera. I guess my question is to get to the point, um, what is, uh, what role does eliminating kind of like relationships, uh, as a part of like your slowdown and when you're processing and, um, you know, going from these shifts of mind to heart, and you're having to eliminate relationships as well, whether they're family or friends or coworkers or whatever, because they're not healthy or they're triggering or what have you. What do you address that in some way? Because I just for me, when I'm hearing this, when I'm slowing down, I'm still like, yeah, I'm in my slowdown, but I'm still kind of, you know, recovering from all of these, uh, this change, this huge change in how my, um, my social world looks now than how it did before. And I don't know if that's part of just like how you reflect in it. And that's just a part of this, this journey. And so when you're in your slow down, you're still processing all of that. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but, um, for some reason it keeps coming up when you mention that. And I'm like, well, I wonder how that, that, um, that is, that is kind of going, uh, or playing into this, uh, sovereignty and then, you know, learning and embodying this wisdom and logic to wisdom. I'm still kind of, um, thinking about that for mm -hmm. some reason. I don't know if you could speak to that. Absolutely. And thank you for asking this question because that's, uh, um, it's completely understandable, uh, that when we go through, a shift like this and and um, often when we slow down and come closer to ourselves we realize that um, for example people uh, are not as healthy for us and we want to be at that eagle's perch and it cannot happen as easily if we have a number of people around us that are not allowing us to be like at least that's how it um, feels sometimes so yes, the slowing down helps us come closer to ourselves and what truly matters to ourselves. And once we, and it's part of this self-awareness process, right? To realize certain things for ourselves. It might be relationships. It might be at, that a job is not fitting us anymore. And it might be um, certain foods we've been eating. Maybe it's not like, why am I eating this, <laughs> for example? It gives us the opportunity to take action at the end of the day and decide, because at the end of the day, we are responsible for our, our own happiness, if you will. So yes, it's completely natural to realize that certain relationships may not serve you anymore. And, but then comes the decision, what do I do about that insight? Um, so yeah, the, the slowing down 
is what people often don't want to do because it can, as I said in the very beginning, it can show you things that you don't want to realize or see or deal with. But that's when the commitment comes in. If you are feeling there's no point, or I'm not going back to my old self or I'm on this journey now and I feel good about it, there's always this conversation in, internally about what am I going to do next? And that was exactly that uh, fork in the road that all of us are coming into. I know we're running out of time. Does that help, Stephanie? Yes, that is wonderful. And I'm, no, I love my slowdown phase. <laughs> yeah. As painful as, as it, this whole thing has been, it's wonderful. And no, your, your uh, remarks were very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. And we are going to wrap up, but I would love to continue this conversation in uh, our group, Living from the Heart and, and Intuition, where I will invite you to be part of four sessions with me. Uh, I think I'm going to do them either quarterly or monthly uh, to dive deeper into this concept of living from the heart and intuition in a book club format. So I invite you uh, to get my book and I will give you a free gift today and a free chapter, first 30 pages of the book. Uh, and I will put a link below to, uh, to get that. And I will put it in the group as well. If you join the group, you will get all the information there. Thank you very much for joining. And thank you for the opportunity to share this with you today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.